Hey there, and welcome to another movie about Solana. Solana also took part in this fix, or is taking part in it right now. I know that a lot of you are waiting for the C wave of wave 4, but the question is whether we are already in it or whether we are still in the third wave stretch before the fourth wave starts. I believe we still need to wait a little longer. The market still doesn't tell us what to do. If you know what levels we need to see break, or if you watched the last movie, you know that the C wave to the downside is moving forward. For those who are new to the channel, let me explain. The scenario we are following for Solana is positive. It is part of a larger correction, but that's not very important right now. The important thing right now is that we're keeping an eye on a so-called diagonal structure that should still finish wave four and then rise in wave five to $93, $113 or more. Based on how things are going right now, we will hold wave four support. I won't add that to the chart until we have a definite top, but it could be around $40, which is where that trend channel ends or where the lower edge is, the line at the bottom of that trend band. That's pretty much the case. Right now, I'm only keeping an eye on one possible outcome. The process should be pretty easy. This daily chart, or four-hour chart as I show it to you now, hasn't changed at all in many, many weeks. This is still the pattern we've been following for weeks, or maybe even months, since we're here in an ending diagonal. Third waves, especially diagonal waves, can easily spread out, and we might be able to see that right now. On a smaller time scale, however, it's not clear if we are already seeing a B wave in wave 4 or if the third wave is still developing. We need to accept that in the markets and see if there are any clear levels that need to be broken to make it clear that the C wave to the fall is starting. Let's look at the chart for one hour now. On the shorter period I'm keeping track of, there are two main possibilities. Also, it's pretty easy. When you have three or more, it gets tricky but when you only have two, it's pretty easy, especially since both are positive. They both come from the same base case. We only get a deeper pullback in one of them, which is the white section here. In the first case, we can assume that the third wave peaked on November 16. There was an A wave going down, a high B wave, and now a C wave going down might be ready. I don't have proof yet, though, that the C wave has begun just to tell you, when we moved down here, I told you that we needed to keep the door open for higher waves. Maybe even for an overshooting B wave or an extension of the third wave, since we only have three waves down in this move. If that's the A wave, then an overshooting B wave could happen. There will be more of this in the third wave if it is still part of the increase. The reason is that when there is an A wave in three waves, it's not always clear whether the previous wave extended or the B wave was just too far. That's pretty much how a fourth wave works. If we're already in one, we can see an A, B, or C, and we all know that fourth waves have fake outs and other things like that. We don't always know where we are in price action, which can be annoying, but it's not what it's really about. Elliott Wave told us to be ready for fakeouts and overshooting B waves. Even though we hope everyone was ready, we still have to deal with the unknown. Even though it never really broke through our barrier or the projection, I can't say for sure that this wasn't a high B wave. It was thought that this go up would reach up to $76. I mean, it got to $77, but that's not a long-term break above it. Also, if we look at Fibonacci retracements for this high B wave at $76, the $1.38 was touched and quickly broken, but I wouldn't call that a break of resistance. It responded to and honored resistance, and that's usually a level I keep an eye on. For the fact that there isn't even a break in the daily schedule. Because of this, we need to keep both short-term situations in mind. In any case, you should always have a bullish and a bearish situation that can work. They are both parts of a strong one that is okay. In one of them, we should get a bigger pullback, but not in the other one. Now, there is a clear level that I would use to tell them apart. So there are a number of levels that need to break in order to be sure that we are in a C wave. What's more important than the breaking of certain levels is the structure. If it breaks below $61, 60 cents, that would be the first good sign. The break has to last for a long time. That would make me more likely to say that we are in the C wave. It keeps us a little bit in the dark right now. Once the price breaks below the low point of the A wave, which is at $51.40, we know for sure 
that we are in the sea wave. Based on the comments, it looks like some watchers can't handle that uncertainty very well. But, to be fair, the chart is pretty clear. It's pretty easy to read the chart. This is pretty much what we track for our report. I have been keeping an eye on this for our case for many weeks now, mostly because of this diagonal structure. We have a very clear level to watch, but also, you know, don't force it, don't try to. It seems like some of you, not just a small group, try to find clarity everywhere you go. There may be times when a technical analysis shows a lot of uncertainty in the chart. This happens, you need to think about what that means for your portfolio and your trading decision. For example, I read yesterday that someone said, oh yeah, you've got two scenarios, that's just too many. Well, there are always two, but there are too many for me to know where to buy. The only thing I can really do is give you the technical report. I can't give you, you know a handhold how you trade because that's your own strategy. Of course, you know your own situation and so on. But sometimes the best move is not to do anything right. Don't try to force a decision if the chart isn't clear. Okay, and I think it's fairly clear, but I also don't think it offers a great reward to risk ratio to the upside. At the moment, it's all about risk. Of course, it could go up further this way, give you micro support, but it's just the risk that we get the C-Wave pullback. So, yeah, I mean, what more can I can I say focus on the charts that offer really solid reward to risk ratios where you have, and that's even more important, where you have clear risk parameters. Okay, very clear, I mean, here, as I said, below $61.60, we only get the first confirmation that wave C starts. It will be fully confirmed below the uh, wave low. Do you really want to go along here with a stop below the wave? Low, I mean, you can do that. But the thing is, the likelihood is we're very close to the end of that third wave extension. But yeah, you have to make the decision for yourself. I can really only present you with the relevant levels and the structure of the chart. But yeah, embrace the uncertainty, you know, embrace the uncertainty you have to do. That, you know, there isn't, there is never going to be just one scenario that's all I have to say about Selena right now. I hope you like the news. If you liked it, please click like comment, and subscribe. If you really like what you see, please check out the channel membership. Thanks for watching. Hey there.